Manchester City to bounce back against Brentford. Liverpool to slip up against Luton. It's all kicking off in what is a special couple of games in the Premier League for the big Premier League title race. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. Hit the like button, subscribe if you're new. Both things are always and forever greatly appreciated, of course. But without further ado, let's go on with the video today. And it is, of course, looking at the next couple of games to come up in the Premier League. Mainly, Manchester City's game in hand against Brentford and Liverpool's game that they're playing instead of this weekend because of, obviously, their Carabao Cup commitments with the final being on Sunday, the game was brought forward uh, a few days to play on Wednesday night. Couple of massive games in the Premier League. I would normally do a Premier League predictions video, but it just seems silly with only having a couple of games. So we're doing a special sort of mini uh, predictions video for these two games specifically. Like I said, Liverpool are going to be preparing after this game straight away for the Carabao Cup final on Sunday. Cannot wait for that one. Massive game in prospect. For the Reds there against Chelsea at Wembley, of course. But tonight it all kicks off with Manchester City taking on Brentford at the Etihad. City side looking to bounce back from, obviously, the dropping points to Chelsea at the weekend. Liverpool are still two points clear at the top of the table. They'll be looking to maintain that gap. But, of course, they know that a slip-up could allow Arsenal to capitalise with their game being played at the weekend. Massive game for both of these sides in particular and for their opponents, of course. And we're going to kick things off with tonight's game, which is Manchester City taking on Brentford. And I've gone with Bre with Man City to bounce back from their uh, performance and result at the weekend. Of course, we know that City dropped points at the expense of Chelsea. 1-1 one, one draw, it finished there, meaning that City's advantage in the title race dwindled and, and was extinguished on that day but City will be looking to bounce back here and put some real pressure on Liverpool before they've kicked a ball uh, in their game against Luton. Big game for both of these sides. It's never a foregone conclusion. We know that Brentford can be difficult, particularly when they face some of the big boys in the Premier League but these two teams did not play that long ago and of course City came out as the victors on that day um, and I would strongly expect City to once again um, bounce back here, get the job done, and get the victory over over Thomas Frank's side. It won't be easy by any stretch of the imagination. I imagine Brentford will pose a bit of a threat, particularly on the direct counter-attack. And as we know, um, City are vulnerable on that counter-attack uh, or, or that direct approach, whichever way round you want to look at it. We know that Brentford, earlier on in this season, scored their goal in the game against City with an extremely direct approach from a goal kick. So we know that City can be vulnerable. We saw it against Chelsea that City were vulnerable. We've seen it time and time again this season that City do have fragilities in that in, in their defensive ranks. But going forward-wise, they are still very strong. I'm sure Erling Haaland in particular will want to redeem himself from that horror show of a striking performance that he put on against Chelsea. He missed three or four really good opportunities in that game to really help City towards a victory and put Chelsea to the sword. Missing them was a big contributing factor to why City dropped points at the weekend. I'm sure he'll want to redeem himself. It wasn't a great performance all round from that Manchester City side, but I think against Brentford, it might be a very good opportunity to bounce back. And against the Thomas Frank side, who aren't in the best of form, they're kind of hit and miss, they're a little bit all over the place, but one thing we do know about Brentford is that they work very hard, and we know that obviously like against some of the bigger teams in which their counter-attacking style really does seem to uh, be a thorn in the side of uh, many of the bigger teams in the league. Uh, we know that they do pose threats on that counter-attack, and I'm sure Ivan Tony in particular will be looking to continue his good goal-scoring form since returning from that lengthy ban he had earlier on this year. But I have gone with a 3-1 victory in favour of Manchester City. I just think, overall, City will get the job done. I think they'll dominate from start to finish in terms of possession. I think they'll have more shots, uh, more... Um, uh, uh, better, ch better chances, better opportunities. We know that in the previous game that these two teams played, uh, if it wasn't for Flecken in the B's goal, we know that this game could have been more in City's favour in terms of a much more bigger scoreline than what it proved to be. But 
Uh, Phil Foden was the hero on that day. I'm expecting him to have a big say in this game as well. I'm expecting Haaland to redeem himself from the weekend. I'm expecting City to just overall uh, redeem themselves uh, and better themselves from the draw against Chelsea. And I think it's a very good opportunity to do that against this Brentford side, who, like I say, have been a bit inconsistent and hit and miss all season. Um, and, and somewhat have gone a little bit on the radar, in all honesty. But... We do know that they will still be a bit of a threat and will cause some food for thought for Pep Guardiola to think about. And if Guardiola goes about this in a uh, thorough way, if he doesn't overthink it, if he just goes into it and just plays how he normally did, how he normally does, and goes really for the throat here and really for the kill, City will indeed get the three points that they desperately need and can put some pressure back on the likes of Arsenal and. Of course, Liverpool before a ball is even kicked for them going into what is a massive week in terms of the Premier League for both of those clubs, whether it be uh, directly or indirectly. So City to win, City to get the three points and City to win this game by three goals to one is what I've gone for here. Moving on to Wednesday's game and it's Liverpool against Luton and I've gone with a 2-1 win to Liverpool. Now, Liverpool should win this game regardless. Liverpool are at home. Liverpool are obviously in a good vein of form. And there's also the extra incentive there to obviously maintain their points gap at the top of the table. But they are facing some difficulties in terms of injuries. Now, I'm not saying this is an excuse. I'm not saying this right off the bat to get a sort of get out of jail free card. Liverpool should be beating Luton. But... You cannot deny that the loss of key players is obviously going to be noticeable. There's no Allison, there's no Trent, there's no Matip, there's no Simicast, there's no Soberslide, there's no um, uh, Jones, there's no Jota. And that's all that we know right now. There are still rumours flying around that Mohamed Salah will be unavailable for this game, Darwin Nunes may not be available for this game and God knows who else. It's not looking particularly great for Liverpool right now, whether it be for this game or in fact for the game on Sunday against Chelsea in, of course, that big Carabao Cup final at Wembley. It's not looking great. The injury front is piling up and Liverpool just can't catch a break with injuries right now. But some way, somehow, they're still going strong and they're still finding ways to win. And I think on Wednesday night, it's going to have to be another one of them performances that may not be the best, but may be strong enough to grind out a result. We know that Luton are dangerous. We know that Luton have this never say die thing about them this season in which they're just throwing everything at. We know that Luton are enjoying themselves in the Premier League. We know that Luton are fighting for every ball, whether it be first ball, second ball. We know that Luton can pose a lot of teams food for thought and we have seen that time and time again this season. However, at home, at Anfield... I still have to give the slightest of edges to Liverpool and they've still got the likes of Luis Diaz and Cody Gakpo that are still uh, finding their feet a little bit and obviously uh, finding a bit of form as well to go along with it. They've still got the likes of Connor Bradley who's in great form. They've still got uh, even Endo as a, as a CDM is still looking very strong and they've still got the better, uh, defender, the better defenders with all due respect. Uh, to Luton it's just going to be about whether or not uh, what kind of shape their attack is going to look like will Salah be there will Nunes be there will they be rested because of obviously a massive cup final on Sunday these are some of the questions that Jurgen Klopp is going to have to answer in this game and it's going to be very intriguing to obviously find out um, the answers to those particular questions uh, are Salah and Nunes both fit enough to play some part in this game? Were the rumours true? Are they genuinely injured? Will they be risked in this game and threat of obviously maybe making the injuries worse for the, for the game on Sunday? Lots of things going into this one that are causing plenty of proof of thought for, for Liverpool. But I think if you're Chelsea right now, you're kind of a bit more optimistic about things going into that game, especially when you see the injuries that Liverpool are... Um, having to deal with right now and of course the extra 90 minutes as well that's going to be going into the legs of those Liverpool players um I don't understand why the Chelsea game couldn't also be moved to the Wednesday if the Liverpool game is but um yeah 
Uh, it is what it is. I know Chelsea meant to be taking on Tottenham this weekend. So, don't understand why they couldn't have put this on the Wednesday. Or even the Tuesday. Or even the Monday. Or even the Thursday. Because teams play Thursday, Sunday all the time. So, yeah. Strange one that Chelsea get away with it this week. But, at the same time, we move, we deal with it. Um, like I say, Liverpool should get the job done. I still would back Liverpool to win in this one. But it's not going to be easy. And it may not be exactly pretty by any stretch of the imagination. Pretty much whenever a Liverpool player goes down now, Liverpool players, myself and uh, Liverpool fans and myself included, are holding their breath that it's not another injury to add to the list of uh, ever-growing list of players that are currently sidelined. Um, for a few weeks, maybe even a few months. So, yeah, it's not going to make for a pretty watch by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe the football may help with that a little bit, but I still would expect Liverpool to get the job done by any means necessary to, of course, increase their stance um, going strong at the top of the table, to increase the pressure on the likes of Arsenal and Manchester City to obviously keep up and catch up. Um, but, yeah. I, I, I think Liverpool will get the job done. Again, it will be a massive result, this. If, 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 the, if the injuries are true to the likes of Salah and your Nunes and everybody else, and obviously I know that obviously Jota's out, and Jones is out, Alisson's out, Trent's out, whoever else you want to add to that list, Sobosly, Thiago, Bicetic... It will be a massive result, this, for Liverpool. It will be a massive result. And I know people go, well, it's only Luton. But Luton have been, have, to their credit, been, been brilliant to watch this season. And have been probably better than what a lot of people, myself probably included in that, have uh, uh, were expecting from them at the beginning of the campaign. So, full credit to Luton. Liverpool should get the job done here, though. Not expecting it to be pretty. But I think they just have enough firepower to obviously get the three points that they need to maintain the pressure on the likes of Arsenal and Man City, like I say. But uh, yeah, fingers crossed for a Reds, Reds win here. And like I say, if it is to happen, it will be huge going into that game on Sunday against Chelsea. Well, there you have it. That is the Premier League mini predictions game for this coming week in terms of Brentford versus uh, Manchester City at the Etihad and, of course, Liverpool taking on Luton at Anfield. Those are just the thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you want to call it, of this guy. I want to know what you guys think. What do you make of the two games that are coming up in the midweek round of fixtures? That's obviously having to change because, obviously, City were involved in the uh, Club World Cup which is why the Brentford game got got postponed until now. And, of course, Liverpool are involved in the Carabao Cup action this weekend, so that's why that game has been brought forward. What do you make of these two games? Obviously, they're going to have massive effects for both the bottom of the table and, of course, the top of the table uh, in these aspects. So let me know your thoughts, your comments, opinions, but most of all, of course, let me know your predictions on Brentford versus Manchester City and of course Liverpool versus Luton as well. I'm sure that will make for great and interesting reading down below. Otherwise, hit the like button on the way. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you're new and want to see more content like this. Both things are always and forever greatly appreciated. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening. I've been Fletch. This has been another Fletch Talk, uh, sorry, mini Premier League prediction, Fletch Talks video e sort of thing, whatever the case may be. Um, and I'll see and speak with you all again soon in another video or live stream or whatever it may be. Cheers, guys. Thanks everyone for watching. Take care. Have a good rest of your day. And I'll speak to you all again very, very soon.